Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Amen. We focus on John 3, today's gospel. In the name of Jesus, dear fellow believers, of all the knockdown, drag out fights, of all the epic battles, this one is the biggest. It affects us in the very core of our being, it touches the very essence of our life. Losing it means losing our life, winning it means eternal victory. I know, that's really heavy. That's kind of a lot. So it's probably not something we think about every second, every minute of every day. Not the first thing you think about when you wake up, especially on an early spring ahead morning. That's a lot to think about, and it's a lot of stuff right there in that epic battle. There's other things you might think about first thing in the morning or on a any given Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, daily struggles. If you have a busy schedule, then you're maybe battling daily stress. If you were stuck in isolation, then you're battling the feeling of isolation. If you are struggling with financial worries or concerns, that might be a daily battle. There might be all kinds of daily things that you focus on and daily battles with yourself with worry and anxiety and sin and temptation that leads you to go to God in prayer. One of the reasons that we have church is to refocus on this great epic battle and this great epic victory that Jesus won. Because we may not focus on it on a daily basis and there's so many other things that occupy our attention and because it's such a big, heavy thing with a lot to think about, we come together we gather in God's house to refocus on this great epic battle against darkness and death. We refocus on the great epic victory that Jesus has won for us because he is on our side in this battle and has granted us epic victory in this battle. We can also take comfort in knowing that he is on our side in every single one of those daily battles as well. When you eat of it, you will surely die. That was the warning that God gave to Adam and Eve in the garden. And we know the rest of the Bible teaches the wages of sin is death. But that doesn't really seem to affect us all that graphically or dramatically or directly or immediately. We sin on a daily basis and yet we haven't died from it once. Imagine if life were like that, if every time we sinned, we came face to face with death. If all of a sudden some deadly peril confronted us and all of a sudden we were on our knees pleading for our life before God and Jesus stepped in to defeat and beat back death and take our sin away and give us life. In that replayed, all through life, again and again, right before our eyes. That's a little bit of how it was for the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness. They sinned against the Lord, and death appeared right there in front of them. This time it was in the form of poisonous snakes. They had sinned, they grumbled and complained and accused God and Moses of wrongdoing, of mistreating them, neglecting them, treating them badly even though he was nothing but gracious and merciful and faithful. So in the form of these poisonous snakes, death appeared, and repentance followed. Repentance in the form of dropping to their knees and pleading for help and rescue. Save us from the snakes. Spare our lives. Forgive us and rescue us, we pray. And God did. In his wonderful grace, in the riches of his mercy, he stepped in and provided rescue. His promise on a pole for them to look to and live. They were rescued and saved. Our battle is not nearly so dramatic. At least it doesn't feel that way to us. Our sin is not met with an immediate response from God. There's kind of a delayed reaction. We sin all through life and yet life goes on. So this is where our battle gets a little bit tricky, a little bit subtle. This is where darkness comes into the picture. 
Darkness enters the battle on the side of sin. Darkness hides the sin. Darkness covers up what sin really is and what sin is really like and what sin really deserves and makes it seem as if there's no danger and sin can go unpunished and sin has no consequences. Darkness covers it so that we're blind to the actual battle we're in and the actual danger we face. And so that great epic battle is easily put on the back burner and other things occupy our immediate attention. Light exposes sin. Light shows sin for what it is. Light reveals the deadly danger of sin and the wrath of God that we deserve. So, of course, evildoers don't want the light to shine. And believers in Jesus who have been called by the Spirit's grace step into the light. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Do you understand the battle? Do you understand the two parts to it? That first we fight against darkness so that we can understand our sin and have it revealed for what it is and the deadly danger of our sin so that it's not concealed as something that's not ever going to happen. And then when the light shines on our sin and reveals the deadly danger, then we actually see the real enemy of sin and death that we face on the battlefield. You and I have already come into the light of God's truth and love we have already been rescued from sin and darkness and death by our Savior who has conquered it all for us. And yet this battle continues to rage. It rages on the back burner. Because again, this may not be the forefront of our attention or our daily focus and struggle. There's daily life with daily stresses, daily struggles, daily frustrations, daily battles of all different kinds. And this may not be the big focus of where our mind goes. But behind all of that, it's there. Unseen, inside, where no one is present to observe except God himself, light and darkness are raging within us. Even as believers, our sin does not want to be seen. Our sin wants to hide. Our sin wants to lurk under a flat rock. And the more our sin hides, the more the danger grows. The more our sin is allowed to fester and stew under that flat rock, the more that danger increases. No, there's no deadly serpents that are going to suddenly appear. And in all likelihood, there's no sudden deadly wrath of God that will appear on a Tuesday morning or a Thursday afternoon right in the middle of daily life. But still, sin is deadly. Unrepented sin eventually and ultimately kills. There's this warning in Romans 2. Because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you're storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. By ourselves, we have no defense against God's wrath. By ourselves, we have no defense against the death we deserve for our sin. By ourselves, we have no defense against the darkness that seeks to hide our sin and it's true, the true danger of it. But you know what I'm going to say next by this time. You know what I'm going to say next about this battle that we're in. We are not alone. In this battle that we face, this epic battle for our lives, he is on our side. Jesus is on our side. He has entered our world and entered this battle to fight and win for us and earn eternal victory. Jesus came as the light of the world. He drove back the darkness of sin and unbelief in our heart with his holy light. So sin is seen. The true danger is exposed. We see our enemy for what it is right there within us and the danger we face. But even there, Jesus is on our side. Even there, shining on us with the radiance of God's holy law, pointing out our sin, pointing out the death we deserve, he is on our side. 
because he did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. He did not come merely to expose our sin, but to forgive it. He did not come merely to show us the great danger of our sin that we face death because of it. He came to defeat death and grant us rescue and eternal victory from it. This is the whole good news of the gospel that we know and love and continue to refocus on, that he is on our side, that God loved us despite our sin, that God gave his son to save us from our sin, That God condemned his son for every sin, so that every sinner is now forgiven. You heard the words, now hear them again. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but forgiven. Of course, the flip side is true too, as the words say, whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they are deciding to hide their sin in darkness, and to ignore the danger of their sin, and in unrepentance, face the wrath of God alone, apart from the saving Son of God. We are saved, sinners are saved by grace, through faith in the Savior, or not at all. So you and I can be so very, very grateful that God not only gave His Son, but gave the saving light of the gospel, that the Holy Spirit, by His almighty power, came into our hearts and drove the darkness back at our baptism and with his powerful word, brought us literally and truly, spiritually, from death to life, brought us to faith, so that through faith we are forgiven. Through faith we are saved. Through faith we live forever. Again, you know the words, shall not perish, but have eternal life. We get to look in faith to the one who was lifted up on a pole, lifted up that we may look to him and live. The one who died in our place that we may live through him, the one who was wounded so that we can be healed, the one who suffered and died and was punished so that we have true and lasting peace. If this battle with darkness and death is the most epic battle, this is the most epic victory we could ever receive. Paul writes, our Savior Christ Jesus has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. One way to respond to this epic victory would be to decide that the battle's over. Since the victory is won, the battle is finished, and we don't need to fight anymore. But of course, you know that would be premature, and too soon for that, we have a little longer to wait. No, the battle continues in our hearts as we continue to drive back the darkness by the power of God's word. As we continue to have Jesus stand by our side and lead us into the light, that our faith may shine brightly and our gaze may continue to be fixed on the one who is lifted up, that we may live. No, instead of putting it back on the back burner, let's bring this epic victory with us into our daily battles. Or better yet, have Jesus join us in our daily battles. Since he has won this epic victory for us by his death and resurrection, has driven back darkness and death and rescued us for eternal life, you know he will also be with you in every single daily battle, whatever they may be. On any given day, Monday through Friday, different days of the week, different struggles, different daily things you focus on, different daily things that grab your attention and make you struggle and have conflict. The same Jesus who was on your side and granted you this epic victory over darkness and death to give you everlasting life, he is on your side in all of your daily struggles. He will be with you and help you and strengthen you and grant you the victory. Amen. Please stand with me. Our Savior Christ Jesus has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel.
Amen.